we got the iPhone 12 stuff happening. It's happening really soon. Yeah. And you know Apple's going to come out. They can do their event. And they're going to be talking a lot about 5G. Because this is that next generation. This is this generational leap in, I don't know, the potential, the a huge component in the performance of your device, your mobile device, is uh, it's around bandwidth potential. What you can and can't do with it, in many cases, has to do with what type of connectivity you have. It's a connected device, Will. Sure. And so... Apple is obviously not the first manufacturer to approach 5G. They 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 uh, weren't trying to be the fastest, but the, according to Apple, now the time is now. The time is right for 5G. But here's the thing: in certain markets in the world, 5G penetration significant. Yes. All right, if you and I. Or in South Korea, we'd be booming right now. 5G for days. Mm -hmm. We'd be swimming in 5G. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, assuming we had a device capable of it. You got the towers, got the signals, and you got the real 5G. And if all of 5G is not created equal. Yes. It's a lot like what happened with 4G originally. And you had to, you had the carriers advertising it in a little logo up in the corner yeah. of the device. But then it was like, it was really it was 4G light. They just want to call it that. 4G plus or something? They just have names. Yeah. Anyway, we get this report here. Analysis. Reuters. New Apple iPhone 12 to offer 5G speeds and U.S. networks can't deliver. So this is a little PSA for anybody who's just uh, maybe hasn't fully considered the... Uh, the situation, which is you're going to go out and spend a lot of money on this 5G phone, and you may even spec up all the way up to the top tier model, which supposedly is going to pack millimeter wave. Mm -hmm. You may do all that, and still your carrier or your location will not be capable of utilizing that particular component right. of your device. So you may be paying for more than what you can use in this particular article they liken it to. Uh, having a having a Ferrari, but using it in your local village. Where village. You, yeah, village, where okay. you cannot drive 200 miles per hour. The roads cannot maintain those speeds. Well, the networks. And then the other piece that I want to I want to put out there is relating to who does have the real fast 5G, which in the states at least is Verizon. Verizon has the millimeter wave stuff, but it's available in select locations. And so if you're a would-be iPhone 12 upgrader or 5G purchaser in general, you're going to want to make sure that the device that you purchase is millimeter wave capable because the same thing applies across other brands. You're going to need that component. And that your the city or place, the place that you expect to, to utilize your device is supported as well. Hmm. Now... That's for people who are expecting or hoping to get these really fast speed tests that they could take screenshots of immediately after getting their new device and publish to all their friends to be jealous. Yes, that's what you do. However, there's a, uh, a completely different group of individuals who may not care all that much about 5G, but may think, hey, down the road, I'm going to hold on to this phone for a number of years, and down the road, if this... Uh, becomes more accessible, I'll be ready to go. Mm. Kind of 5G ready types. Yes. So when I look at a report like this, I think, does it really matter? I think to myself, yeah, okay, the US is not ready for 5G while other parts of the world are. But does that mean that Apple shouldn't have done it? So for example, a conversation was getting passed around. Okay, 5G is using a lot of battery life. Apple is likely going to stick to 60 hertz on a display because the combination of 5G and 120, this is the rumor on the street, was, was draining a battery too fast. Mm -hmm. So this is one of those weird considerations where, okay, you can't really take advantage of 5G in the U.S. right now. You could immediately out the box start utilizing 120. However, mm -hmm. Apple, from a marketing perspective, they have to sit there and look at their presentation. They got to think about their product. 
they're going to have a moment where they can do the millimeter wave speed test. Mm -hmm. They're going to have a moment where even if you're not in one of those places, they can say you need to be ready for 5G. As a marketing term, people, the general public's awareness of 5G seems to be more significant than screen refresh. Yeah. It but, seems more ubiquitous. But I would ask the audience if they could choose between one or the other. And again, this is going to depend on where you are geographically and if 5G is available. But let's assume that it is. Are you going to take the 5G today or would you be more inclined to take the 120 hertz if you could only have one or the other? Now, of course, there's plenty of devices on the Android side that you can have both. Mm -hmm. So you can do that too. But in the iOS, the, the thing about the iOS space, which is important, and I always reference this, I've said this many times, because Apple, the, the ecosystem, the history, the market penetration in the Western markets, so significant, when Apple makes a shift, a shift or includes a new technology, it expedites the process for everyone else. Mm -hmm the carriers and everybody goes into gear like okay now's the time we got to mm -hmm. do the 5g so sometimes yes the hardware does predicate the services or predicate the software it comes first mm -hmm. in order to provide that push yeah so that's what i think is going on here just be aware you're not going to get full pop 5g in most places in north america out the gate mm. with the iphone 12 mm. we got a, a sponsor today speaking about Full pop. This this uh, sponsor goes full pop. It does. <laughs> it's Manscaped. And uh, this, of course, Lawnmower 3.0. I unboxed my very own recently. This is for the, the man grooming. This is for keeping yourself in tip-top shape. This is in order to prepare you for 5G. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm having fun. Uh, yes, this is a grooming tool for male uh, body hair formulated. You could use it for any hair, mm. but it's, it's formulated, it's constructed in order to deal with the sensitive locations. They have the ceramic blade on there, which is gonna be more gentle. Uh, it, the pack that I got comes with a whole number of accessories, including a charging dock. It has tremendous battery life as well. This is 90 minutes of battery life. You can also use the Lawnmower 3.0. Uh, it can get wet. All right, so it also has water resistance. You're trying to do a two for one mm. and you need to be shaving in the shower or something like this. It's no problem at all. Uh, the other thing I want to mention, it has an LED light on it. So when you're shaving, I don't know, maybe you like to shave in the dark, Will. Or maybe it's just dim because it's a romantic experience you're having. Sure, yeah. And then this will illuminate so that you're not, you know, you're not getting carried away. Mm -hmm. so that you're still under control, mm -hmm. which is something that you would want to be under control when you're say, uh, shaving those sensitive regions. You just, uh, this is 2020, all right? Mm -hmm. It's 2020, Will, and it's no excuses anymore. No. You got to be uh, uh, taking care of yourself. Yeah. And gotta you can't be, be you got to be scaping yourself, and you can't be just trying to use a, the wrong tool for the job. Mm -hmm. And that's something I learn in life the older I get. Mm. You find the right tool for the job. You don't rush. You track down the right tool for the job. And in the long run, you yes. end up better off. Yes. That's that's where I got in 2020 Absolutely. after living a few years on this planet. You can get a deal right now. All you got to do is head over to Manscaped. You can save 20%. You can try it for yourself. You go to manscaped.com slash Lou. I'll put this link in the description of this video as well. It's manscaped.com slash l-e-w you're going to get 20 percent off plus free shipping so that you can always use the right tool for the job mm. once again manscape.com slash lou give it a shot you're going to be impressed you're going to be amazed actually that the ceramic blade you're like wait I'm, i should be cut i should be bleeding here no the ceramic blade you're going to be amazed uh, back to the Apple event happening very shortly here. We have a little Ming-Chi Kuo update. Okay. He has uh, come out and said the vanilla iPhone 12 is going to be the best seller of the entire lineup. Hmm. Vanilla iPhone 12. So not the mini model, not the entry level, not the cheapest model. Very interesting. He doesn't think that people are going to want to downgrade their screen size en masse. Of course, 
Apple's going to still, they're going to sell plenty of the mini model, but he thinks the number one model is going to be the vanilla iPhone 12. That's the $799 price point, hmm. presumably. That's the rumor. That's People are pretty convinced. It's the dual camera model, right, as you see in the images here. So it won't, obviously, it's not a, not, not a pro model. And it's 100 bucks more than the rumored 699 starting price for the iPhone 12 mini. Hmm. But it gives you a 6.1-inch screen, which seems to be the more typical choice right. at these type of price points. So he, can't, he comes out here and says uh, the iPhone 12 vanilla will have an expected share of 40% of the total shipment. That's pretty big because mm -hmm. they're going to have four devices, right? You have the mini, you have the vanilla, then you have the 12 Pro, and then you have the 12 Pro Mac. Mm -hmm. You got four models and 40% goes to one. In fact, he believes the remaining models, the mini, the iPhone 12 Pro, and the iPhone 12 Pro Max will each get 20% on their own. Mm. Now, something that's worth taking into consideration here as well, Will, is availability. If he has any kind of knowledge around which models are going to be the most available, presumably if you see a sold out, but you know you want an iPhone 12, mm -hmm. you could, you'd be like, ah, oh, fine, I'll buy the 6.1 inch model. I'll spend a hundred more. Yeah, what did we hear? It was the uh, iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro was going to be sooner than the mini and the Pro Max. Right. The 6.1-inch models, both of them, are supposed to come first, and then we're going to wait about a month to get the mini model and the Pro Max model, the right. largest model. So, yeah, maybe that played into this particular analysis or this particular expectation that, hey, with with the, we're already so delayed, right? Uh, this is later than Apple would like to have, been, have uh, put these things on pre-order, had their event, and, of course, it's later than they would want to ship these things because uh, the the... The colder it gets outside, uh, you know, uh, all the other things happening in the world, your lockdown, your economy, people just uh, sitting at home, you know, uh -huh. thinking, I don't I don't know, do I need that thing? Whatever. Earlier in the year, September, it's, you know, outside, at least around here, mm. it's a little brighter. Mm -hmm. You get into those grim days. That's why you have the things like Black Friday. That's why you have the events like Christmas. Yeah. But, I mean, you have it for other reasons, but you see where I'm coming from. Yeah. What yeah. turns into a consumer thing mm -hmm. because that time of year, the retailers and the sellers of goods, they need a little boost. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, anyways, $7.99 iPhone 12 vanilla model. Ming Chi says it's going to sell 40% of total shipments. You guys let me know down in the comments of the four models that they're launching, which one are you most interested in? Uh, a lot of iPhone talk, a lot of iPhone events. You know who's not into the iPhone is Blackpink, the famous K-pop group. Okay. Not only are they not into the iPhone, but if you approach them with an iPhone, they will refuse your selfie. In fact, smack it right, right out. Of your well, head. they might not smack. They might not smash it in front of you, but they'll just turn the other way, like pretend yeah. they don't see you, and definitely not take the selfie. Now you didn't know this, Will. No. You see, that's why. Sometimes I got to bring these things to your yeah. attention. The K-pop update? Yeah, sometimes okay. I catch you slipping. All right. And then I got to bring you back in line because these this is a big deal, Blackpink. Yes, I, I've heard they are. Yeah, they are a very big yeah. deal. So they have, well, th this is, a, first of all, it's a wonderful headline that they're just, they won't even mess with your iPhone. It says a couple of things. It talks about. a huge title. It, that's a huge title. It, but it gives you some insight into K-pop and Korea and endorsement deals. Mm. They've got to deal with Samsung. Mm. And they follow it to a T, that deal with Samsung, in a way oh. where you're almost impressed at the level up that they draw the line yeah. in the sand. And so they've been doing this huge promo with the Galaxy A80. You're hearing their tunes all over the place. Uh -huh. I guess, is BTS doing something as well? They do LG stuff. No, Samsung. The Fold. The right? Fold? Yeah. Yeah, they got yeah. it locked down, man. The yeah. K-pop, Samsung's got the K-pop locked down right now. And uh, they even got their own colors, their own special edition. Actually, if you scroll down right now, you'll see the Galaxy A80 Blackpink edition, which is going to be, which was available in, uh, in Singapore. Look at that collab. Oh. With the watch, and this is this was a while ago, so that post there is uh, August of 2019. It's, it's old, but they've been working together for a long time. 
and who knows the extent of their agreement, but that's a that's a pretty large level of collaboration right there. Like yeah, Apple's not going to do that. Apple's not going to do that for Blackpink. No, never. Never. But anyway, here's where things heat up because I got to give you the whole story, Will. Because remember, okay. you're slipping over here. Uh, you go scroll down a little further and you find a video clip of a fan front row at a Blackpink show. And she's holding up her phone for the selfie with uh, Jenny from Blackpink. Okay. And Jenny She's starts to approach, one. and she goes, okay, fine. And then she touches it, and oh, like it's poison. She drops it. <laughs> and you know what she mouths? Because you can't tell what she mouthed right there, Will. But, of course, I've already, I ran the analysis, of course, as, as I would. Wow. And she, <laughs> she got shocked there. She got shocked. Okay, so here's what it says. She says, iPhone no, comma, Galaxy, dot, 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 Samsung, and then walks away. Mm. Their deal is so strong to remember and have it front of mind in that moment, no iPhone. And the other one got too far along where the other one who's laser beam focused said, you put that down. Wow. Did you see all this happen? There's a I, high level stuff. There's yeah. Um, dude, imagine going to like a meet and greet, paying like hundreds, thousands maybe. And then all of a sudden, you just want a picture with them. You're carrying an iPhone. But here's the thing, Will. In the old oh. days, with the endorsement, it's okay because you're not constantly being recorded. But today, you mm -hmm. sign the exclusive deal. You only hold, I will only hold the Samsung devices. Yeah. So the difference is, Will, let me tell you the difference. If somebody shows up and just snaps a photo of you with an iPhone, fine. It's you holding it. It's yes. them holding yeah. it is the issue. And you can tell the way they, you put that down. And they got, and they really, the one girl, I got a lot of respect. The one girl, Jenny, yeah. she knows, she knows the score. She knows the deal. And Samsung's she, just clapping. Yeah. She's like, oh, the Samsung executives, they love it, yeah. man. And of course they love it, man. And, oh my and gosh, but she, she knows the deal away. so well is when she polices the other girl who forgets the rule and then she comes uh, over and like samsung what's the matter with you slap no we got this deal <laughs> okay so anyways it goes deeper okay one fan kryptonite 0424 on twitter says okay fine i'm gonna find a way around it i'm about to go to the black pink mm. in chicago and i got an iphone so all, what i'm gonna do is just write on my case samsung Although I don't know why you got to scratch out spelling too. error and everything like that. Yeah. I'm just going to write it on my case and take my phone to Jenny because then, you know, make a little joke. Well, you scroll down and this person actually got the phone in front of Jenny from Blackpink. And, and she's about to start rapping here in a moment and actually notices, apparently, the case and starts laughing. And it disrupts her actual rapping. That's what this person yeah. says, at least. They're very happy with it. And it's It sort of looks like she recognized it. Maybe she's just having a good time. But yeah. anyway, point being is, it, that is a serious Samsung sponsorship deal. Blackpink. I mean, they had to put ungodly money in the bank uh -huh. to police it like that. Uh-huh. They put some money in the bank to police oh, yeah. it like that. And so shout out. Shout out to Jenny. From Blackpink. Which one is her again? For being the boss and making sure everybody follows suit. Speaking of video clips on the internet, mm. how about this for a video clip? Xbox Series X unboxing is here. Well, I mean, it's not here, but it's here because some guy on YouTube by the name Willie Crow, and I don't, I can't remember. The clip, the clip just got taken down, but I think you found a substitute, a re-up. Uh, he's got this. He's got an Xbox Series X in in what looks like retail packaging, the real retail box, and this thing's not even out for a month. And yeah. you know, you and I, we go back and forth with Microsoft. We know it's not easy to get this sorted out with the retail packaging, and he does it in the most casual way, like it's no big deal. And uh, uh, goes through the entire contents of the box. It's all wrapped up, all nice. The controller, 
and all the rest of it. I, I, I don't know if it's Spanish or Portuguese or whatever's going on here or where it leaked out of. Uh, it doesn't actually even, I, I don't believe in the video he even references where it came from. He's also just very excited. Now, some have pointed out, including yourself, Will, that the wrapping on the thing, you weren't, you were a little worried, you're a little concerned. You saw the wrapping overlap the sleeve. And, yeah. and, and this is something that also, who's this YouTube user, the page that we're on, on the re-upload? This, this guy's a 8-Bit Eric. 8-Bit Eric. Assuming this video is still up at the time you're watching this, 8-Bit Eric pointed this out, Willie Do pointed this out, that the paper looked a little less than perfect. And I looked at it and said, I don't know, I think that's within the realm of acceptability. I unboxed a few products in my life. But Will thinks it's a little skeptical. Now, I would have agreed with you. I would have give you, given you a little bit of skepticism. Okay. I would have added the, that similar ingredient. However, the video on the, on the actual page is now taken down. Right. Which, yeah. to me, gives a little extra credibility to mm -hmm. its realness mm -hmm. i don't know i'm just guessing maybe not maybe they could get it taken down even without that but uh, this is our first analysis i guess it's our first thing to go on with the retail packaging which you could come to uh, to experience yourself if you happen to pick that controller packaging i know from previous generation xboxes that's exactly what it's that's like legit. in the white sort of foamish envelope with a little bit of tape and the components themselves look correct also so Again, we can't say for certain. It's all very curious. And of course, we will have the real retail thing here relatively soon. This is all creeping up so fast. It's mm -hmm. so many gadgets and so little time. Yes. At which point, then we'll know for certain if this is the actual unboxing experience. But I'm going to go on the side of yes right now if I have to vote. Okay. I'm going to say when we eventually unbox it, this is what the experience is going to be like. Are you going on the side of yes or no? Because you were so skeptical earlier, but now the video is taken down on the page that uploaded it. I would say yes. This uh, It would take a lot of work to orchestrate something like this. Mm -hmm. I would say, yeah, it's it's real. I like that orchestrate. Yeah. I like that. You've, yeah. you've thought about orchestrating in the past. Yes. You've considered yes. orchestration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, it launches November 10th. And we're probably going to have a retail unboxing prior to that. So we'll do our comparison at that point. We'll see if uh, Willie Crow brought the authentic stuff or not. Uh, another event that's happening this week, the OnePlus 8T event. Of course, we're going to have an unboxing video of the OnePlus 8T immediately right at the moment of the event. Uh, but apparently we got this new rumor here that alongside the OnePlus 8T, there's also going to be a special edition OnePlus Nord, which of course... Maybe you don't remember at this point, Will. That's their budget offering. That's their budget model. Yeah, very popular. Very popular. And and it, it kind of uh, gathered steam and gained attention partially because of its vibrant color. This whatever teal, cyan type of thing. Uh, the the, the uh, There's a few okay. terms people like to use. To, okay. Is it blue? Is it green? Is it light blue? Is it... What was it? What's that? It glacier, glacier blue? blue or something? I mean, we've heard it all. We've heard it all. Yes. So the naming, whatever. It's neither here nor there. In fact, on that TV right there, it looks blue and it looks more green on my monitor. So oh. you, you never know with this stuff. Anyway, yeah. uh, so apparently this new OnePlus Nord is going to be the same as the current version other than the finish and color, which would be special edition or limited edition and this is all coming via a uh, preview post on oneplus nord's instagram page and you can see that texture there it looks like an imprint of a oneplus device and this is a a material presumably i'm guessing i'm projecting right now i'm ming chi quoing it mm. with a lot less effort because i'm just looking at an instagram post yeah i mean i don't have to call up anybody with information close to the matter Although I quo. maybe I could do that too. He's like yeah. one plus. What's one plus? Yeah. I mean, can I just call up one plus? I don't. Anyway, it's more fun this way. So this is the Instagram uh, preview, and it looks exactly like their old material they used to use an early one plus, the sandstone, and then now yeah. they use it mostly only in cases. But you had the early devices which had this finish on the back, and so this is like a gritty texture. It's like a really grippy type of texture. And if you read the caption on the OnePlus preview post, 
they say inspiration for beautiful de design can be seen everywhere. Okay, for one. And then in the follow-up post, they say, this time around, it wasn't marbles or rare gemstones that lit our fire. It turns out particles from any everyday rock can be equally beautiful. And then they got these rocks, CG looking rocks on top of what looks like sandstone. So sandstone, stone, regular rocks, regular stuff. It's not even all that cryptic. It's pretty straightforward to figure out as far as I can tell. Yeah. But uh, so anyway, uh, we, we expect to see this special edition price. Maybe it'll remain the same. I don't know. It's all happening October the 14th at the OnePlus event, which you and I may or may not be live streaming if people are interested in joining and participating. We'll see if we can work that out. Uh, this was your story that you sent over. Google Assistant is getting more integrated, more intelligent. It's diving more deeply into your device and a list of apps that, that currently take advantage of that uh, numbers 30, but it, it will potentially be more than that in the future since developers can tap into this greater assistant functionality, allowing for things. Here's the example that's being used like tightening your shoes. Hmm. Now, right now you're thinking, what exactly are you talking? Well, the Nike, Nike put out some sneakers in the past with it, that were self-lacing, yes. but it was a bit of a process to time up. You'd launch the app or reach down, touch the shoe. Well, you want to touch the shoe with self-lacing. Yeah. Kind of defeat the purpose mm -hmm. of it. Anyway, so the, the feature that's being touted here with the assistant is just, hey, Google, tighten my shoes. Of course, I just launched Google for everybody right now and now the words that i'm saying currently are being transcribed into google assistant mm -hmm. for all the people and they, they're watching it come up saying lou shut up already please yeah someone's shoes are tightened right someone's now. shoes just get tight so uh anyway there's about 30 apps it could be something like that and this is actually fairly technical well this is not easy stuff to go deeply into the app and no longer just be superficial but to actually achieve a task that would normally be a few taps this is some real time-saving stuff and really a, a better impression of the eventual power of these voice assistants once they can reach and dive and tap into different sections uh, on, on, a, on a deeper level. So uh, the some of the other apps, My Fitness Pal, you could be like, rather than going in and logging your smoothie, you could say, hey, Google, log a berry smoothie. Mm. Uh, it's also compatible with Nike Run Club. Uh, Google, check my accounts on Mint. Check news on Twitter. So, so there's some context to it, and you actually skip some steps. It's very exciting stuff. Uh, other, other apps that are currently enabled for this type of functionality, Etsy, Discord, Snapchat, Spotify, Walmart, and more. There's about 30 currently, but Google has made the feature available for any app developer to optimize their app. So anyone can eventually tap into this, mm. and all of a sudden we can, well, this whole thing can become a lot more fluid to the point where maybe people will use it more. I'm a big fan of Assistant. I use it as much as I can. Mm -hmm. But if I know it's just going to launch an app on the phone and then I got to go onto the app on the phone, uh. it kind of defeats the purpose. It's not the eventual version of the Assistant we could all imagine yeah. because we don't need you to go back. And you might go back and then you reference the movie, which you told me to watch a long time ago, which I didn't watch. Yeah. Which one was that? With the Assistant in the ear. Oh, he okay. falls in love with the Assistant. Oh, yeah. Uh, her. Her. And yeah. you tell me, Lou, go watch the movie. As this is an important movie. It's <laughs> oh, a good you should watch it. Movie, see? And then you say you should watch it. And then I say, oh, yeah, I'll watch it. Just put it as a Google reminder. And then we go and we cover a story about a more advanced assistant. And then you tell me again to watch the movie. But this time I did it all. Oh, okay. I, I went full circle here and I recommended to myself on your behalf uh -huh. to watch the movie. You see how that goes? Yeah. Yeah. Just saved you the time and energy. That's what I was aiming at. Anyway, you can also change the terminology, which is cool. So you're not stuck with the default instruction. For example, the example here with the laces, uh, the original could be tighten my Nike Adapt BB. Well, that takes a while. So the custom config could be Google lace it or lace them right. or tie them or Titan or whatever. You could make it really short and sweet mm -hmm. and only you know your special language with your assistant, everybody else looking around watching you and saying, that's pretty nice. Uh -huh. Got your own Everyone's custom jealous. language going on. Here's another thing Google's working on, turning YouTube into a shopping destination. This seems like an absolute no-brainer. 
so many people watch product content on YouTube. I think we have some experience with that, Will, where they're looking at a product and the way it is right now, it's, well, you go to Amazon or there's an Amazon link in the description for the product that the person's watching and then they go and maybe do more research over there. Well, if you're Google, are you happy with that? We send everyone to Amazon? Yeah. We, 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 we provide Amazon, all these customers. They try. They do Google Shopping stuff. And, of course, they have other retailers that pay for advertising to try to get you on their store. Uh-huh. But meanwhile, they got these stinking YouTubers sending everyone to Amazon, mm. forgetting where their bread is buttered. And you got Susan over there, and you got whoever else at YouTube, and uh-huh. maybe you even got the Google guy sitting there saying, uh-huh. Sundar might be in there saying, No! Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. These guys do we did all the hard work over here on the YouTube side. Let's partake. Uh-huh. Let's get the retailers involved. Let's build the experience. Where's the home shopping network for the future? Where is that? It's not happening. Yet. Now in other markets, Will, I don't know if you heard about this, the like live stream shopping in China and things like this. Yeah. It's happening. Yeah. With their uh TikTok equivalent. Shopping's nuts there. You got the guy, remember the guy was selling the, the produce. No, the guy was selling the produce. Oh. The farmer. <laughs> okay. Well, there's a guy in China that's uh, really big. Kind of like a James Charles. Oh, yeah. No, they got, got all those. And... They got all those. Yeah. But I'm saying even a small time guy, he was selling the produce? oranges or apples or something. Uh. And he's live streaming and people are putting in their orders on the live stream. Yeah. To a local farmer who then is essentially using it like a food delivery app or something. Uh, He's taking orders in the live stream. And he became a celebrity on the produce. The farmer. That's very streamlined. It's great. Yeah, because it's all happening right there. And so why should it? all these different pieces need to be applied to it? Now, if you're Amazon, you got to be thinking they kind of have to do the same thing that the other one is not. So Google says, well, we don't have the shopping piece, so let's take the assets we have and try to enhance the shopping experience. Meanwhile, Amazon has to sit there and say, we don't have the content piece. Yeah. When it comes to product-based content, it's all on YouTube. Yeah. So we need to add that. So then this is the entire destination for that. Uh-huh. It's a race right now. So anyway, the uh, Google is, they haven't said exactly what they're going to do, but it's a new type of integration that they're experimenting with with e-commerce platform shop uh, shopify which is huge shopify i'm using for later case tremendous uh uh service application whatever you want to call it service application all the above uh streamlined and it just i mean if you're selling things online you should and you're not using shop like you should know about shopify Mm. pretty much it's that straightforward and so it's an integration that would allow for a pop-out kind of a thing, which could show the products and you could quickly uh, click through and purchase a couple of clicks. Yeah. But the whole experience feels like it's inside of YouTube. Now, you could imagine eventually, Will. I mean, I'm just pontificating. Eventually, what it is, your credit card, everything, your address, it's all in YouTube mm. and you just click order. Yeah, it's tied to your Google account. Really? You just click order yep. and it's on its way and you didn't have to go anywhere or do anything. Yeah. And you could have limited editions and limited runs. And when you're doing product research, mm-hmm. it's very, I don't know, Will. There's a lot of potential. Hey, man. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying they could make a few bucks. We'll wait and see how that goes down. But you know what's good, Will? <laughs> when somebody makes a few bucks, but it's actually better for the customer as well. Yeah. In other words, the customer gets to skip steps, do something easier or better. Yeah. Good stuff. Streamlined. Uh, Razer put out their very first gaming chair, and then The Verge went to speculate that it was actually uh, somehow affiliated possibly with Secret Lab, which is the chair that you're sitting in, because they just noticed that it's a very similar design. Mm. That's Secret Lab that you're sitting in, right? It is, yeah. Do you know which model? it's with the coats. Is it the Omega or the Titan? Do you know? Um... I think it's a Titan. Hold on. Oh, yeah, it's a Titan. Yeah. It has a T. Anyway, so apparently people like those chairs, those gaming chairs. People, they have a following. People like them. Yeah. You've been sitting in it for a while. 
Uh, now, Razor goes and puts out their chair, and then they come out and say, no, we have no affiliation at all. In fact, uh, ours is different. And you can look at this. They do look similar, but what really caught my attention about... Well, it wasn't the 4D armrest. It wasn't the Razor styling. What caught my attention, because I'm a super nerd when it comes to this, is the lumbar support. Yeah. Because, you know, I've been goofing with this chair, which I don't even remember the name of it now. I did the video on it. What was the name of this? The Al... Al Lee? Al... Uh, all 33. 33. Yeah. But it had Backstrong. Backstrong. Backstrong by All 33. And this one is so bizarre. I did an entire video on Unbox Therapy. It has this pivoting piece. It's a whole... It's for the lumbar lovers. It's a whole experience. It's much, much different than anything I've sat on before. Anyway, Razer, they take a totally different approach. You should go watch the video on that, by the way, if you're interested. Uh, they've got this piece which is attached to the backrest but then is adjustable and can pop out quite a ways. And if you scroll down, there's actually a graphic which shows it off. Look at how far that thing comes out. I mean, Whoa. you're really going to be flexed around that. Yeah. I mean, you need some serious lumbar, I guess. So anyway, I, they say it's fully customizable. I guess you can pop it out as much or as little as you you choose to. Uh, the This is obviously far more advanced than other systems, which just like place a pillow there or something like that. Mm -hmm. This is a lot more configurable. I like configuration and I care about chairs. So we'll see how it goes for Razer. Maybe I'll check one of these out. They'll send one. I don't know. It's got a faux snakeskin kind of look to it. It's, it's obviously very gamer, but mm -hmm. it's not the most gamer of all the chairs I've seen. It has the green thread, but it, you know, it doesn't have flashing lights or smoke machines on it. No. It's uh, it's pretty subtle. It's I not, like it. yeah. I mean, it's within reason. Anyway, so apparently no aff affiliation with Secret Lab, even though it looks like. But I mean, how many things can you do with a chair, anyways? Mm -hmm. It's it's a chair at the end of the day. I mean, you could have different support, different adjustment, things like this. Uh, but who knows? I I think they'll probably sell a couple of them. It's called, by the way, the the model name is the is kind of weird. It's Isker, the Razor Isker, or is that just the lumbar lumbar support? Or is that the whole name of the That's chair? That's the whole name. The Razer Isker. And it's four ninety nine. It's five hundred bucks. Anyway, yeah. it's uh, it ships October 29th. That's pretty soon. You can pre order it right now. Gamers, prepare yourselves for some high density foam cushioning and some Isker lumbar support.